Дорогі брати і сестри, прошу Dear brethren and sisters in our Christ Jesus, today we have the last day of the convention, but we understand that this is not the last convention. There, will, there were many conventions this year and there will be the next one. You have the possibility to be there on these conventions this year. Dear brethren and sisters, our hearts are full of the joy and love to our Heavenly Father for this grace that God let us to have this convention, international convention, that brethren and sisters has the opportunity to come from different countries to, to show the pure love to each other, not on Zoom, but in, in person. We are really grateful for this grace to all the brethren and sisters that were organizing this convention and made this effort to, uh, to make uh, it happen and that we can feel good here. And we can say it with the words of Apostle Peter who who said that when God, uh, when Christ take his disciples with him, when they went to the mountain of change, then Apostle Peter said, Lord, it's got good to be here. And we can say the same, this, that we, we are good here. We are happy. We are grateful to our Lord that we have this opportunity to be on this convention. I would like to read some verses from the Psalm 16. Psalm 16. We read. A secret treasure of David, watch over me, O God, for in you do I put my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no goodness apart from you. And when we look at the third verse, as to the saints in the earth, they are the excellent in whom is all my delight. It says about our desires that we want to be the saints in the earth that gather here on this place, the saints gather here. And this is the pleasure for God. This is this nice smell for God that God cherished. And our uh, what we want is to that we go to them. Every one of us wanted to go here and meet brethren and sisters. This is our uh, desire and God listened to our prayers and he led us to meet here and we have this privilege to be together here. I want to read, I want to say something that brother asked me, at the end of the day there will be a lot of, um, more brethren than now so if there is a place next to you maybe someone has put something on the chair at it at what he doesn't see then please take your things and make the places free because there will be more brethren and sister in the evening there will be a lot of us so we need free places we thank you for this uh, to when you listen to this uh, what I said. Uh, the hymns will be led by brother Bogdan Borovets. He will lead our hymns. After the hymn, brother Andrew Laibida will pray. And now brother Borovets will uh, lead us in hymn. Please, brother. 
Uh, peace to you, brethren and sisters. We are really happy on this beautiful international convention. And this is the next day when we will praise our Savior and our Heavenly Father. At the beginning, we will sing the hymn that in the international hymn books is 69 number. Хвала Тобі, Христи, хвала, Нехай бзьмі повшистек час, Жизнь на шонку свого тяла, Ромчі в нас, це пчийонці нас. Хвала ці, хвала ці, Our Father, that you are in the heaven, in the cosmos that we can go here, we go to you. You hear us, you see us. We thank you that you gather us here so we can spend this time together singing to you, praise you. Please bless this day, be with us, Fill our hearts with your spirit, with your wisdom, so your will will be fulfilled in every every time. Please bless the mouth of the brethren that will speak these words. Please give us the wise heart to understand them and that we can um, fulfill it. Please uh, forgive us our sins. We thank you for everything in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Brother Andri. We will read the Heavenly Manna, and Brother Vorodia Wojciech will read the Manna. August the 19th. Abstain from every form of evil. First Thessalonians 5.22. 
the exhortation is that everything that is evil, whether it has a good form or a bad form, is to be resisted and opposed. To abstain from every appearance of evil is another thought, a different one from what the Apostle's words in the original would warrant. Nevertheless, they represent a sound principle. We surely should abstain not only from evil things, whatever their form or garb, but we should abstain so far as possible from doing things that we know to be good, which our friends or neighbors might misunderstand and consider to be evil things. Should be avoided that our influence for the form of evil. First Thessalonians 5.22. Thank you, Brother Volodia. We have a short time. I would like to read some greetings. Brethren and sisters from uh, Ecclesia in Lviv ask to send you greetings. And also brethren from different ecclesias in the Ukraine. I don't want to say about every, every ecclesia, but they all ask to greet you. They remember about you. And uh, they remember about your prayers and your support. They are really grateful for your um, prayers and support for us. We also have the greetings. Brother Adam Kopchik from the Australia asked to greet you. And also the sister Natasha asked me to send greetings from sisters from Siberia that uh, were sometimes on the international conventions, you remember them. And also the sister Tamara also asked to send greetings to you, to all of you. Maybe if there will be more greetings on the second uh, intermission, and now we will sing the another hymn, and then we will ask Brother uh, Knitter to uh, lead the discourse. I'm sorry, but this hymn will not be on the on the screen. You will listen to it. Ісуса, Він нас всіх відкупив. 
добру святу і невинну, Він за весь світ пролив. Прославляйте люди, прославляйте Бога і Спасителя свого. Ісуса Христа. Прославляйте люди, прославляйте Бога і Спасителя свого Ісуса Христа. Дякую, брате Богдан. Дякую, брате Богдан. I have one uh, thing to say. This is for uh, dear brethren. At 11 o'clock, right after this discourse, the brethren from all the committees, international committees, are asked to gather in the uh, hall next to the registration office at 11 o'clock, right after the discourse. Thank you for this announcement. And now we will ask Brother Marek, so he will say his topic to us that he has prepared, as I understand it in Ukrainian. It's uh, beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Please, Brother Marek. Mimo tego, że nie umie grać na żadnym instrumencie, ale jest to coś pięknego dla moich uszu. Drogo umiłowani, czy zanim przystąpię do tematu, do wykładu, który przygotowałem, chciałbym przekazać pozdrowienia od Ludwana w Gnieźnie, którego jestem członkiem. Pozostali braterstwo, którzy nie mogli tutaj być z nami, prosili, aby przekazać wam wyraz bratniej miłości, życzyć tych łaski, błogosławień Bożych, zbudowania też na tej konwencji, jak i to, co najważniejsze, w naszym poświęconym życiu, ofiarowanie mogli dokonać wierny i pewnie i osiągnąć tą najwyższą nagrodę. Takie jeszcze szczególne pozdrowienia od jednej siostry, która z naszego zboru znajduje się od dwóch miesięcy w DPS-ie Betania i ona również prosiła, że ktokolwiek będzie się udawał, żeby od nich zawsze też zachodzić pozdrowienia. Dziękuję. Księga objawienia, 20 rozdział, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The topic I wish to share with you by the grace and help of our Savior Jesus Christ is beheaded for the witness of Jesus. The theme verse is found in the last book of the Bible called the Revelation of John. This book begins with the words Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bore record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Wersety pierwszy i drugi pierwszego rozdziału Księgi Objawienia. 
God is the author of the revelation of Jesus Christ, who gave it to John through his angel to show unto his servants. Special servants called messengers were used to convey the content of the book of Revelation. At that time, St. John was exiled to the island of Patmos, where hardened criminals were sent. These prisoners were forced to serve hard labor in quarrying marble. In Revelation 1.9, we read, First John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Let us note the structure of this verse is similar to that of our theme verse. And I saw beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. God gives the reason for his imprisonment. He was on the island of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. John declares that he was on the island because of his faithfulness to God's word and because he was preaching the testimony of Jesus. The book of Revelation is symbolic. Chapter 20 presents pictures that were to be fulfilled in the future. St. John sees Satan bound for 1,000 years. He sees thrones on which sat those to whom judgment was given. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It is the class of overcomers, the partakers of the first resurrection that he refers to in Revelation 20, verse 6. Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. The word soul means a person, Genesis 2, verse 7, and a man became a living soul. St. John in his vision saw souls, people who were beheaded because of their witness for the word of God. Beheaded means cutting off one's head. As an example, we have now John the Baptist, the greatest of the prophets who died, Matthew 14, 10. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. The apostle James also lost his life in the same way. Acts 12, 2, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. However, was the class seen by John to be all actually beheaded to the end of their pilgrimage of following the Lord? 
czy w taki sposób miały one zakończyć swoją pielgrzymkę za Panem. Jan widzi obraz pościnanych, którzy ożyli i królowali z Chrystusem. Jest to klasa zwycięzców, uczestników pierwszego zmartwychwstania, o których pisze błogosławiony i święty, który ma część w pierwszym zmartwychwstaniu, albowiem nad tymi, która śmierć... Nie wiemy, ile osób w kościele były literalnie zbierane. Więc co to znaczy zbierane? Jestem pewien, że to ma znaczenie symboliczne. Wobec tego, co oznacza pościnanie? Jestem przekonany, że jest to znaczenie symboliczne. symboliczne. Jest tu mowa o klasie pościnanych dla szczególnego celu. W tym widzę. It is a class that is beheaded for a specific purpose. In this vision, they were beheaded in order to be revived, to attain the glory and the honor of reigning. Beheaded means symbolically to cut off one's head. The Apostle Paul in this letter to the Colossians writes the following, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Set your affection on things above, not on the things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Mortify your members, be beheaded. For ye are dead, our will is dead. In the eyes of God, we are reckoned as dead in the flesh, yet we live in the spirit as new creatures in Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. By examining the tabernacle, the entrance from the court, the state of justification to the holy was covered by a veil. Złoto symbolizujące boską naturę. Ich umieszczenie w miedzianych podstawkach oznacza, że mamy can sacrifice by being justified by the merit of the Lord and is shown in the way of the holy by that first veil. Nowa natura opiera, opiera się i spoczywa na naszym usprawiedliwionym człowieczeństwie, bo mieć symbolizuje doskonałość ludzkiej natury. This shows the death of the human will, the fleshly mind. After entering under this veil into the holy, we find the new creature. Obraz przejścia do stanu poświęconych wierzących. Pastor Russell w szóstym tomie, wykład drugi, strona 71, zapisał. Nowo spłodzony umysł, czyli wola, jest wszystkim, co obecnie reprezentuje nową naturę. Aż do chwili, gdy w pierwszym zmartwychwstaniu ta nowa wola, rozwinięta w charakterze, otrzyma odpowiednie ciało, ciało niebieskie, ciało duchowe, doskonałe i zupełne. The Apostle Paul shows us the oneness of the church with Christ in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 27. 
First Corinthians 12, verse 27 reads as follows. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. The head of this body is Christ. Ephesians 5.23, even as Christ is the head of the church. This is also confirmed by Ephesians chapter 1, and gave him Christ to be the head over all things to the church. How do we understand this? The head contains the wisdom, the brain, the intellect, our thoughts, our mind. Recorded in 1 Corinthians 11.3, that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of every woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. The husband is the head of the family. Christ is the head of the church. By accepting Christ as our head, every member of the church enters into a relationship with the Lord as a member of his body. In order to be a member of the body of Christ, one has to be figuratively beheaded, which means to be devoid of one's self-will. Our will has to be surrendered to God's will. We have an example in our Savior, whom we desire to imitate. And Jesus said unto them, from John chapter 6, verse 38, For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. By sacrificing ourselves to God, we surrender everything pertaining to an earthly life. We surrender our rights to restitution that God has prepared by Jesus Christ. We have a heavenly hope that is reserved for the disciples and the followers of Jesus. The surrender ring of our self-will to God is the beginning of our Christian walk. We are to imitate our Lord Jesus, to follow in his footsteps, fulfilling our vow of consecration. We can ask ourselves a question. Is this an easy task? Am I advancing faithfully in the footsteps of Jesus? The Lord said to his disciples from Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. Be my follower, walk in my footsteps, that were in total obedience to the Father's will. These are the conditions for an entrance into the school of Christ. Tego pragniesz, 
Let him deny himself, cast off self, renouncing one's own will to kill self, renounce earthly desires, <coughs> excuse me, and ambitions. Psalms 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. One has to totally free one's self-will by totally giving it up. The desire to get rid of self-will and replace it with the will of God should be our pleasure and not from any pressure. And takes up his cross. This requires lifting up one's cross. This takes place when we come to a knowledge of the truth, carrying our cross throughout our consecrated life. The fulfilling of God's will in the present unfavorable conditions will result in trials, experiences, and suffering for righteousness' sake. This comes about from opposition to the world's spirit, a fight with the flesh in putting aside Satan's temptations. The words, let him follow me, by taking the same path, our Lord walked in the same direction by faithfully carrying that cross. Following in the footsteps of Jesus and sacrificing our earthly life and its life's rights. Our Lord laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. 1 John 3.16. Surrendering our will shows that our will is then totally subjected to God's will. His will becomes our will. Whatever we say or do, we always seek the guidance of our Lord and his will. As an example, we have our Lord's words from Luke chapter 22. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Our Lord Jesus was a perfect human being. He was stable, developed in fullness of character, and had a very strong will, which he totally surrendered to the will of his Father in heaven. Renouncing of one's self-will is shown in the beheading, that is, being dead to self, and in, the and in its place, accepting the will of the body's head, that of Jesus Christ. So what does this mean? We lose our individuality in order to belong to the class that is the bride of Christ. In every member of the church's body, there has to reside and abound the will of its head, his mind and his spirit. In order to be recognized as a member of the body, the chosen church, one has to be beheaded. A prerequisite is total sacrifice, a uniting with the head of the church, our Lord Jesus Christ as a member of his body. There is but one body of Christ, the church of the living God. Ephesians chapter 4. There is one body and one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and the Father of all, who is above all. Without this, we will not be recognized in order to live and reign with Christ in his millennial kingdom. 
The symbolic beheading occurs at the baptism into Christ's death. Romans chapter 6. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, so that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Baptism is immersion into Jesus Christ, and by this, one becomes a member of our Lord. These members are subject to the Lord as their head, members of the body, which is his body. Baptism unto death is the burial of self-will, the submitting of our will to that of the Lord, sacrificing our all in order to be obedient and a follower of the Lord unto death. The will represents the whole being and all that it possesses. The will rules the body, rules the mind and the mouth. The will guides and allocates our time, our knowledge and influence. All is in the subordination to the will. When we subject our will to the Lord, our heart, as the Bible says from Proverbs chapter 23, my son, give me thine heart. Then we give our all to the Lord. The burial of our human will and subjecting ourselves to the will of Christ shows the death of our human nature from Colossians chapter 3. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. This death, this burial, is our baptism into the death of Christ. We submerge our will to the will of Christ, and we are raised into the newness of life, to a new nature. Although in 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 4, verse 7, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. From God's perspective, we are considered as new creatures in Jesus Christ. We have a hope, we have a purpose, and we strive to the heavenly call. Romans chapter 8, verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. Those who live according to their own will are not pleasing to God. The apostle states, those who are consecrated are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. You are reckoned as dead, dying daily as respects the earthly nature. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. Wherefore henceforth, no, we no man after the flesh. The flesh is only the servant of the new creature. The new mind should take control of and control the carnal flesh, making it a servant of the new mind. God, through his agent, his Holy Spirit, works within us according to his will and his good pleasure to bring the flesh into conformity. This spirit, this disposition of the father that guided his son reveals itself through humility, through gentleness, through patience, through goodness and love. It is the spirit of total submission to his will. Do we find that the Spirit of Christ residing within us? And if not in fullness, then maybe in a certain measure? Yes. 
Our Lord had a full measure of the Spirit, Luke chapter 4, and Jesus being full of the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist spoke of our Lord Jesus in John chapter 3. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Apostle Peter also referred to this in Acts chapter 4. Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. We can possess a measure of the Spirit in proportion to the amount of the world, excuse me, of the world's spirit we remove from ourselves. If this spirit dwells within us abundantly and sufficiently, then it will revive our mortal earthly bodies that are considered as dead, quickened to, in order to serve the new creature. From Romans 8, 11, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. God's power that was sufficient to awaken from the dead is also quite sufficient to work in our own mortal bodies by utilizing them in the service of our Lord God. The Apostle Paul warns us, the believers, the consecrated, begotten by the Holy Spirit, who are on trial unto life, from Romans chapter 8, verse 13, we read, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. If our earthly desires have an influence and try to guide our own lives, then this shows that we are still living according to our earthly pleasures and our earthly will. Leading a pleasant life for our old nature and desiring fleshly deeds shows that our fleshly nature has not yet been totally surrendered to the new mind. The Apostle Paul says, if you continue to live after the flesh, you shall die. You will lose your life as a new creature. By performing our covenant of sacrifice, we have given up all of our earthly life rights. If we withdraw from our original covenant with the Lord by disregarding it, we will die without any hope. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4, Apostle Paul says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit. And verse 5, have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. And if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance. Seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Hebrews 10, chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. We have been enlightened with a most wonder, wondrous light. Our eyes have been opened. We see the grace of God shown through his word. We recognize God's plan of salvation. We appreciate God's wisdom, his power, his goodness, and love that operates through Jesus Christ. We have tasted of God's grace and the blessings resulting from the sacrifice of our Savior and have a relationship with God. We receive the heavenly gifts thanks to the grace of God, justification by the precious blood of Christ. We become partakers of the Holy Spirit, begotten of the Spirit, we recognize and understand the goodness of God's word. We appreciate the richness and the sweetness of his promises. 
we have tasted the power of the future age, the restitution of all things, the fixing of all things, the blessings of the rebirth of mankind. And we are tasting it now and have been justified to have a relationship with God. The spirit, the Holy Spirit has been poured out on the servants and the handmaidens. And in the next age, it will be poured out upon all the flesh from Joel chapter two. By benefiting from such great light of God's words, his great grace of justification and the great of the high calling, we become partakers of this Holy Spirit. And if we fall away, it would be impossible for us to be renewed again. The Apostle Paul shows the possibility of falling away from God's grace, for it is possible to lose one's begotten new life in Hebrews chapter 10. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall ye be thought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. In reading these words, we may say that we are doing the right things. I have accepted Christ with all my heart. I have given my will to him. I am faithful and diligent, watchful in my covenant of sacrifice. But is it really so? Is it really so? When I undermine Bible teachings, when I say that this today this or another verse the apostle may write differently, when I do not practice the clear counsel from the word of God, instead I seek verses to justify myself, when I seek acceptance and understanding from other religious gatherings, searching from other tables rather than the table of God. For on God's table is found the bread of life, the food in due season, the milk, the, the wine, and the water of life that is clear as crystal. The prophet Isaiah refers to other tables from Isaiah 28. In that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people. And for a spirit of judgment to him that smiteth, excuse me, that sitteth in judgment and for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink and are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink and they swallowed up wine and they are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision, they stumble in judgment for all the tables are full of vomit and filthiness so that there is no place clean. Who shall be, excuse me, who shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. The Lord in his harvest time is encouraging and joy to the remainder of his people, the last members of the church class. He is a spirit of judgment and power for those who turn the battle to the gate and it was given unto him to make war with the saints. The fight is to defend the truth from false teachings, verifying all teachings with the word of God, whether it is in agreement with what it teaches, if things be so. Prophecy shows that there will be teachers. Uh, uh, uh. I need the uh -oh. Their tables will have the truth, but it will also be mixed with false teachings. Tables full of vomit, false doctrines and teachings that were discarded long ago by the light of God's word. Presently in our fellowship, certain teachings are returning that were rejected many years ago as inconsistent and having no confirmation. 
The expounders of such present truth are those who speak with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Often the common people who in the eyes of some are unworthy of this work. Matthew chapter 11. At this time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and has revealed these unto babes. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 26. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound things which are mighty. Why is it so? First Corinthians chapter one, that no flesh should glory in his presence. This is an example of what God by his power can use, influencing the hearts of all who were called, encouraged by the promises and the hopes that were revealed before them. Philippians, Chapter 2, verse 30. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. We remember, brethren, who were not educated yet, yet they somehow learned how to read by using a Bible. reservedly. It is similar today, is it? Let us note that in the type, we have a picture of the church, Aaron, the high priest, and his sons, the underpriest. We have a picture of beheading in the underpriest and their garments. Leviticus 8.13. And Moses brought Aaron's sons and put coats upon them and girded them with girdles and put bonnets upon them as the Lord commanded Moses. The wearing of bonnets is a picture of the beheading of the underpriests. The high priest wore around his forehead a mitre, a strip of fine white linen, a symbol of justification to which a golden plate or a crown was fastened with a blue lacer. Upon the golden plate was inscribed, Holiness to the Lord, thus proclaiming his royalty and regal authority, a priest upon his throne. The high priest was the head of the priesthood. The underpriest wore bonnets, a symbol of subordination. They do not have their own heads, as their head is the high priest. This shows us that Christ is the head of the church. Our title text says, Beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. Beheaded, dead unto themselves, but alive to God by our Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of this class of overcomers has to be beheaded and joined with Christ, the head of the church as part of his body. Revelation chapter 19, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The influence of the spirit of truth within us, the spirit of Christ together with the word of God brings about the change so that we disregard our self-will and are led by the will of Christ. 
We recognize the supreme power of the Lord watching out for his instructions to us. In the teachings of the Holy Bible, the New Testament is based upon the old, on the prophecies. The Lord often referred to these records as quotation spoken to the ancients recorded by the prophets. The Bible teachings, the witness of Jesus without the addition of people's wisdom has the spirit of prophecy. The thoughts, the words and deeds give evidence of truth, announcing God's name, his character, his will, his plan of salvation. John chapter 18, to this end was I born and for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. We are to do likewise, giving forth our witness the new creation, the members of Christ's body have to have within their hearts to recognize and to do the will of the head. Thy will be done, my Lord. I have ridden myself of my own will. I have beheaded myself. In our imperfect bodies, it is hard and difficult to undertake. However, in the sincerity of our hearts, we are to strive for a faithful submission to the Lord's will. Let us look into our hearts as to what we find there. Have I surrendered my own will? Is it dead? Have I gotten rid of my own head? And if so, then have I accepted in its place the will of the Lord? Is Christ my head? Am I content in becoming a member of the body of Christ? Maybe I am searching for some something else, some authority, some human examples. The Apostle Paul warns us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, for while one saith, I am a Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? The weakness of looking for examples other than Jesus Christ revealed itself in the early church. Amongst the faithful, a sectarian spirit, a divisive spirit emerged. The head of the church of Christ, Paul, Apollos, Peter, were servants of the Lord, whom the Lord used for the benefit of his body. For all the blessings that we have received by the servant of the Lord, glory and praise should be given to the head of the church, who prepared what is indispensable for our body, his body. Perhaps I would like to develop a little according to my own will, according to my own desires, and a little in accordance with the will of the Lord and his leadings. Just partially doing things, having two heads. Having two heads. Having the will of the old man, the old will, and also the oneness of the new will, the will of the new creature, the spirit, a sense of Christ. The Apostle James warns us in James chapter one, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The new creature does not, does not have a double mind. The Lord surrendered his will totally and unreservedly to the will of the heavenly father. The Apostle Paul writes in Philippians chapter one, for to me to live is Christ and to die is to gain, to die to oneself, but to live for Christ. To this class of overcomers, those beheaded, the Apostle John writes, and which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had he received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. For they discarded the system of errors and confusion, for they did not support it in any way whatsoever. And they lived and they reigned with Christ a thousand years. Revelation chapter 20. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. I wish that all of you can prove yourselves worthy of this wonderful reward, which I also seek, and may God grant it to us. Amen. We thank you, thank the brother for this discourse. Now uh, we will have this uh, privilege to ask we have this opportunity to be beheaded uh, 
in us with our Christ. We so we will be like uh, our head, Jesus Christ. So our head in this world is in this flesh, in the world, and people uh, look at the our head. It's the head of wisdom, of righteousness, of power. And we should ask the Heavenly Father that we have this possibility to behead us, as uh, to have the head of our Jesus Christ. And as brother said, there's the danger that we will have our head. And with by having said it's impossible to grow. Then there will be announcements and brother uh, would say the announcements. Announcements for August 18th. Number one on the table near uh, to the receptionist desk, there are greeting cards addressed to our relatives and congregations. So please sign in sign your name and send special greetings to loved ones. Number two, if someone is planning to leave today, please remember to take your belongings from the hotel before 12 o'clock noon and return the keys to the hotel reception. Number three, just so we know, there were 576 of us at this convention. At 11 o'clock, that is during this coffee break, a meeting of all the organizing committees of international conventions will be held. We ask brethren from the United States, France, Romania, Moldova, Ukraine, and Poland to come to the room near to the convention office, meeting room number 15. Again, I repeat, the meeting room is number 15, and that's for all the brethren to meet for the committees of the International Convention. Number six, if someone from the Brotherhood would like to contribute to the organization of the next International Convention, they may do so through a donation box. It's purple in color, and it's sitting in the convention office or at the literature table. So if anyone would like to contribute, please contribute to those boxes at the convention office or the literature table. Now brother Bogdan will lead us in him. So first he will read the greetings. We have another greeting. This is the warm greeting to the participant of the International Convention from the Ecclesia in Kostki Duże. And now we will sing the hymn number 66 in the International Hymn Books. <laughs> Ah, więc głosić wiesz, czy serko 
Thank you. We will ask Brother Kravets, Roman Kravets, to pray. Our Father in heaven, let your name be praised, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. In the uh, random of your sin, we come to your, to your throne to praise you from the deep end of our heart. For we want to thank you for everything that you are giving to us. We, uh, we thank you for this possibility to meet to this for this privilege. Our Father, please give us more of the Holy Spirit so we can uh, fasten our calling, so we can, we can ask these questions that was asked now to ourselves and that we can that we can ask ourselves if uh, Lord is with us, so that we will um, conduct correctly and do your will. And that in the good time we will hear, good, uh, my faithful servant, you were faithful in small things, I will give you big things. We thank you, our Father, that you give us the possibility that we can gather here from different parts of the world to listen to the uh, Holy Word. We ask for those who were not able to come here, please help them, God, and also our, so we can fasten our calling. We also thank you and ask you we thank you first of all for those that have the possibility to use this um, these words that were set here so that the words that were set here were for your praise and that we can build us thanks to them please give us more of the holy spirit and the more love, patience, and, and mercy. And we ask you that everything that will be said will be for your grace. We give ourselves under your control and everything. And uh, let your son be praised. Amen. Thank you, brother Roman. Now we have the uh, break till 12.